Hi guys, it's Shanna Eubank. It's been a long time since I've done a process video and I thought I would turn the camera on today and maybe film a little bit of what I'm working on. So I have these pictures of my daughter posing by this totem pole up at Sundance in Utah and I wanted to scrapbook these. And I thought because the pictures are so, they have kind of a blue cast to them because it was in the shade, that I thought I would warm it up a bit by putting it on this wood grain paper. This paper is actually from an old October afternoon collection called Saturday Mornings. And uh, I just have it in my stash and thought I would get it used up. My initial thought was to give you a tour through this older collection in case you are a newer scrapper and haven't seen it. But I decided to just do a quick flip through. So here you go. This is a quick look at the October afternoon apple cider collection. It's from about 2013, 2014. Uh, I chose that collection because it was a fall collection. It's adorable and it has pink and blue in it to match my daughter's sweatshirt. Now, October afternoon isn't around anymore, but they're, one of their designers, Stephen Duncan, does design work for Cartabella paper. So he has this amazingly way, a uh, cool way of doing vintage style stuff that looks modern. So if you love what you see, for sure check out Cartabella paper collections. Now I decided to do a cut file of this totem pole because I don't think I will have another opportunity to do a page about a totem pole. So I've got this one out of the Silhouette Design Store and it's a two layer cut file but I wanted it to have a bit more color so I cut that top layer again and I'm just insetting uh, these pieces to, uh, of yellow cardstock just so it's uh, more colorful and has a bit more detail. Now, I know you probably don't have totem pole pictures, so don't take this page so literal. <laughs> you can look at that totem pole and think, okay, what could I put in its place? Maybe a scarecrow or a Christmas tree or some other really fun, big you know, image would be great there. So I've got the pink and blue of my daughter's sweatshirt going on in, in the totem pole. And then now I wanna concentrate more on fall colors because it is a fall memory. So I'm pulling in this a cozy plaid yellow paper in the background and then this gray herringbone layer in between uh, the plaid and the wood grain. And now I'm ready to start working on my title. I'm not going to do a lot of paper layers, I'm just going to map my photos and then I'm going to do a title in three colors, the pink, yellow, and blue, and then I'm going to do some fun scattery type stuff along the bottom of the page. So it's a pretty simple page. Here I'm just working on the titles and I those yellow chipboard letters are by Cosmo Cricut. They're not around anymore either, uh, but I love those letters so I've hung on to them. And then these blue ones are by American Crafts and I'm going to use some pink letter stickers at the top by October afternoon. I mentioned in my last video that I don't really purge my uh, letter stickers very often. I'm trying to get better at that, but mostly I hang on to them, especially if they're capital letters. I love letter stickers that are all capitals because I don't have to mess with the A senders or D senders of a lowercase uh, letter set. And it makes it really easy to do stack titles like this. If you want to, you know, vary your fonts and colors, you can just, they just line up right nice in these little blocked lines and, and make it really easy. But so that's why. I hang on to them. I decided to do a play on words for this title, so I'm doing your "You Are Totemly Cute," which is kind of corny, but that's okay. I love that. I love stuff like that. And uh, I want to pick an icon to go on this page. I love that little fall girl sticker, but she's too small scale wise, so I decided to go with the, this bear. And plus he's got this his hand stuck out and he looks like he's saying you are totally cute <laughs> he's a he's a valley girl there I don't know <laughs> I want to punch out a circle to anchor him on so I'm just holding him up to these different pattern papers that are on the, the these cut apart sheets and I decide to go with that gray and white circle -y type pattern on the bottom left of that six by eight paper so I use a punch to punch him 
punch out that circle. I ink him up, ink it up just like the bear. And then I grab the, uh, a pink scrap that I used on the totem pole to mat that circle with. So now that I know that I'm going to do the circle to the right of the title, I can get that into place and put my bear there, and then I can start getting the title um, into place and we'll kind of work backwards. I didn't catch it on camera, but I, init I eventually go back and tie a little twine bow around the neck of the bear just to give him some texture in that part of the page. So you've got the, the dimension of the, the chipboard letters. The totem pole is actually popped up on some foam squares and then the bear is on some foam squares as well. Some of these letters, as I peeled them off of the sheet, the, the back layer of the chipboard kind of peeled off, so I'm fixing them and as I go, as I put them into, into, into the place. And I love how I was able to just put that word right across the arm of the, the totem pole. Now when you do a title like this with a pun or a play on words, sometimes it's difficult to read. So I put a space between the M and the L and I punched out this cute little heart and, and put that there and that just makes it a bit easier to read. I love the way that the totem pole how with his head and his arms sticking out it's kind of stepping down to the photos so I've tried to follow that pattern in a lot of my other design choices you can see that the pink color is starting to step down as well so you've got the pink in the words you are the pink in the heart and then the pink of that that matted circle and of, of the bear and and then I start to do that with the blue as well I thought I'd there's this little weird like trapped space below the word cute on top of the photo there's that little space so I I had pulled out that tab and I was going to stick the tab there and put the date there but because I'm following the step down of the design it just didn't feel right so I've got the I decided to put it off to the right so now I really want to start bringing in more of a fall feel and I, I punched out these circles from that pattern paper with a feeling of like scattered leaves on the ground and I love it because it's different but I still wanted to have some leaves scattered among the circles as well because fall is my favorite season and you just got to have cute colorful leaves on a fall page I think so I'm getting these cut out and then uh, tucking them and scattering them around the bottom of the page and I'll jump forward to that here in just a second. Here we go. At this point the top left corner started feeling a bit bare and so I wanted to put something up there. I followed the column of the totem pole and I decided to put a label sticker right above his head. So I chose this orange remember label sticker from the collection and then I was going to accent that with a couple of those punch circles. But the punch circles felt too large so I'll actually pull those back off and replace them with leaves here in a minute. So I'm cutting out a few more leaves and um, deciding what color I want to put at the top and and as I'm doing this I'm I decide oh gosh maybe I have too many leaves down here at the bottom and now that I'm looking at it I don't think I do I think I should have left it that way but I do pull some off and and try to redistribute the the colors and 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 make it look not as crazy fall I guess I felt like I had too many but that's fall <laughs> you have leaves everywhere so here's where I put some blue at the top of the page to step down as well so you've got the blue in the tape the blue in the word cute and then the blue tab on the side and then you can see that the length of the washi tape also steps down on top of the title where it says you are so we're just following that step down all the way through this this page I love when a design kind of works itself out that way I didn't plan that I just as I worked I noticed that and so I thought okay I can follow that that lead and start making some design choices to emphasize that even more 
I also cut out a couple of the large leaves. They reminded me of feathers that kind of went with the totem pole, you know, and tucked those off to the side of the circle. They just remind me of a little Indian headdress or something like that. And now you can see my bear magically has a twine bow. <laughs> So I've got this tab sticker and at the right of the page and then the label sticker at the top and I know I want to put the date in one of them and a word in the other. So I'm grabbing these old Allie Edwards stamps. I just love her handwriting and I will never ever ever get rid of these stamps. I love them and I hope if you have them you don't either. So <laughs> I found this word autumn and it fit perfectly in that label sticker at the top. So I did that there and then I'm going to stamp the date in the blue tab off to the right. At this point all of the items that I've used on this layout are flat. You know paper layers and, and chipboard and um, washi tape so I want to bring in some dimensional things. I've got the bow on the bear's neck but on the left side of the page I want to add some bumpiness so I grab these gems and decide to just dress up my totem pole with some large and medium gems. And those are just the gems, the Doris gems that you'll see on the end caps at Michael's. I'll grab them, you know, once in a while just so I have a variety of colors in my stash. And I like them a lot. So I finish off this page by putting my journaling to the on strips to the right of the, the title. And I'm just getting them into place and I trim them here and there a little bit to make sure they step down and follow the design. And then that's the page. It's complete. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing my design process and seeing this page come together. And I'm wishing you a happy fall wherever you are. We'll see you again soon.